often referred to as the lungs of the planet. We need forests, but they are disappearing fast. So what can we do to protect them? We find out on this episode of Sustainable Energy. Welcome to Nofla, just 100 kilometers west of Paris. I'm Asha. I've come here to get one expert's opinion on sustainable forest management. I'll be meeting Stéphane Allaire, who runs Reforest Action, a social enterprise driving worldwide reforestation projects. Also coming up on the show. We do a global tree count and show you why looking after our forests is crucial. Then we take a look back at some of the buildings we've featured in this series, putting sustainably sourced wood and urban forests at the heart of their projects and meeting the architects behind the designs. We've been, for since our inception, 100% committed to the idea that what we build should be pushing towards carbon neutrality or even carbon positive. And we take you to the heart of France's national park to look at how the French government is protecting its natural forests. We have really beautiful forests, uh, lots of biodiversity. Trees are coming up off the ground everywhere, even in cities. Research by the Nature Conservancy suggests that forests, grasslands and wetlands could be the most promising nature-based solution we have on hand to fight climate change and help reduce energy consumption. And there are many more reasons why we should protect them. Forests cover nearly a third of the planet's land surface. They're estimated to support the lives of 2.4 billion people, with wood as a product and as an energy source. Maintaining them can capture and store carbon dioxide from the atmosphere and help communities mitigate flooding and dry spells driven by climate change. They can also improve air quality in our big cities, are essential for sustainable agriculture, food security and drinking water, and, says the FAO, ensure economic prosperity of rural areas. So healthy forests are key to making our future more sustainable. But forests are shrinking even if their decline has slowed down in recent years. 4.7 million hectares of forests were lost every year between 2010 and 2020. Worryingly, the world's undisturbed primary forests have decreased by 81 million hectares since 1990. That's a greater land mass than the whole of Mozambique. Deforestation, be it for agriculture, wood harvest or infrastructure expansion, causes up to 20% of worldwide greenhouse gas emissions each year. And right now, not even a fifth of the world's forests are protected. Many of them lack long-term sustainable management plans. To protect our forests, the UN recommends we change the way we produce and consume food, grow forests to help address development issues, climate change and food security, and restore those that have been damaged or destroyed. A big job in itself, as it's estimated at 500 million hectares of land, greater than the landmass of Algeria and the Democratic Republic of Congo put together, have the potential to be restored forests. France is one European country leading the way on sustainable forest management. French forests cover 31% of France's landmass, making it the fourth most forested country in the European Union after Sweden, Finland and Spain. One man who's changed his career and life around to plant new forests is Stéphane Allaire, the founder of Reforest Action. I'm on my way to meet him at one of the projects he's launched. Hello Stefan, thank you for joining us on Sustainable Energy. We're standing today on a land that you've reforested. Can you tell us a little bit about this specific project? Yes, this forest used to be a poplar tree forest, a damaged one. So what we did four years ago is we removed the trees and we planted a diverse forest made of uh, oak trees, as we can uh, see all, all around, around us, us yeah. here and there but also chestnut trees a bit further and uh, wild cherry trees. They make a diverse forest and the diseases, the storms, the wildfires make slow progress in a diverse forest. 
as opposed to a, a more uh, unique species one, like, 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 like this one. Right. UN figures show deforestation isn't as bad as it was in the 90s. Has it improved everywhere? Well, the global figures show that, but deforestation is still a huge issue that we still have to face because uh, in Amazonia, in Africa and Indonesia, deforestation is bad. So we can act in different ways against deforestation. In our daily lives, with our uh, daily behavior, the way we eat, food, the way we buy wooden products, um, we can fight deforestation. Some type of reforestation helps fighting deforestation. Planting forests mm. have a direct impact on native forests because when you plant a tree that will be cut in 10, 15 years, 50 years from now, well it's a tree that will not be cut in a native forest. What threats would you say are forests most exposed to today? There are different types of threats for forests, depending where you are. If you're in the tropical regions, deforestation is the biggest threat today again. But if you're in a um, tempered forest, like in Europe or France, then there is no longer deforestation. But the forests are degraded because of climate change. For instance, uh, the storms that are more frequent and more violent impact the forest. And the diseases and the insects, they make more damage to the forest again. Earlier in the series, we've met an Indian engineer, Shubendu Sharma, who applied a coal manufacturing technique to plant mini forests pretty much anywhere in cities, a way to solve India's big pollution problems. What are your views on urban forestry and on this specific approach? Urban forestry is very important as far as I'm concerned. When you see vegetation, when you see a forest from your window, there is a study that says that you will live seven years longer Wow. rather than uh, you know, seeing a, a pavement or a street concrete. from your window, concrete. So that has a, a big impact on your daily life, obviously. Do you do it yourself? Oh yes, we do. We've done it a number of times in France and in Europe. And especially last year when we planted the biggest urban forest in Paris with 200 citizens coming uh, from the surroundings. It was on an area uh, 700 uh, square meters big and all the people living around the place came together, the families, the kids and, and the parents, to plant the trees. Where are forests needed? Any specific parts of the world? Not in every uh, part of the world, because in some places forests don't grow, they don't exist, but forests are needed in most places, and especially in the tropical regions. Because in this region, the forests grow all year around, so they are very efficient in terms of CO2 storage, in terms of biodiversity, in terms of everything we need, really. Thank you, Stefan. After the break, we revisit two building projects that use trees and wood and meet the architects behind them. We do our best to imagine new cities that from the beginning they have the forest and the cities together. <laughs> 